northern hog sucker. Oh. I typed H-A-W-G. Google had to ask me if I meant H-O-G, and I did. Whoops. Northern hog sucker, one word hog sucker. Northern hog sucker is the name of this fish we're making. It's a member of 78 other species of suckers and a big family of suckers. And yes, by the way, I decided to bring back fun facts. Kind of enthusiastic about this, fun facts. These fish are found in clear, fresh water, fast flowing current that they can forage to the bottom of the riverbed. We wanna flip over little pebbles, little rocks, and find crustaceans and mollusks, aquatic insects, algae, and river scum to suck up. They scrape material off rocks and vacuum up the particles. Disgusting. That's why I just recently had such difficult time catching one. I literally had my corn on the back of it. I can't get one with corn. I need to get a hook covered in algae beneath a little pebble. Then a northern hog sucker can come by, flip it over and suck it from that rock and then I'll catch one. I had such a difficult time. I was using corn and they had no interest in corn. Sometimes there's little fish that position themselves downstream from what the northern hog suckers are up there doing because they they create such debris so they can garner disturbed food fragments that float downstream. They garner those fragments. Their rating in the conservation status of fish is rated as least concern. There's always river scum, apparently. You're probably pretty fit to survive if you're just like a little tube with a vacuum cleaner on the front. You're ready to go. Southern Canada, Midwest, East, United States, South. They're even in the South. They're everywhere. I walk the streams around here and they're always in there. I see them shooting by. They're really quick little tubes with vacuum cleaners on the front. Good old northern hog suckers. You see one every time you go to the creek. They can live up to 11 years. I think I've seen some 11 year old ones too. They can get kind of big, two pounds. I don't, I shouldn't guess, I should look. 33 centimeters. They'll grow up to full size in about five years. The exceptionally large specimens are usually females. The smaller the stream, the smaller the fish. That's generally the trend. 33 centimeters is 13 inches, and I guarantee you I've seen one larger than that. From the creek I frequent, I've seen definitely larger than 13 inch northern hog suckers. Maybe I got some world record ones in there I need to catch with my hook under a rock technique. That would be pretty sweet. To hold the world record in the largest northern hog sucker catch, that is a prestigious position to hold, I would say. Maybe I just need to go very, very, very small on the hook. I have some ridiculously small hooks. Can't even focus on them, they're so small. Something like that. See, that's my fingertip, those are tiny. One pound test. I could probably get some two pound test in that outlet. I'm probably gonna try too much to catch a northern hog sucker in this video and never catch one. So be ready for that. Their breeding practices are very spray and pray. It competes in other environments with red horse suckers and other sucker species for breeding habitat. And they're just During the egg laying process, daces and minnows and chubs just have a feeding frenzy. All of those freshly expelled eggs are just shooting everywhere. It's like when the feeders go off at a pond, but micro scale. So then apart from the egg laying process, there's a spawning process and that's described as violent. Depressions are formed in the gravel. They dig like little foxholes to separate themselves from the commotion happening during the spawning process. So it's, it's literally like a war zone. They have to dig foxholes to be successful with the activity. The eggs are not adhesive. They just settle on the gravel and sit there. Not given cover, they just so all the males just come to the gravel. There's a lot of them. It says each receptive female might be courted by several males. Violence ensues. The foxholes form. Some are successful, some are not. The long battle slows to silence. Probably about 1% of the eggs are successful and the young hatch from them and the fry swim in schools. They'll prefer the more shallow environments in the creek and grow up to repeat chaos over and over again, such as the life cycle of a northern hog sucker. That's pretty crazy. Relationship with humans. They're just kind of susceptible to man-made creeks and river disturbances. Channelizations, sedimentations, pollutions, dam constructions, things like that. A lot of fish are, because they want to go upstream to spawn, and if there's something blocking that, they can't do that. And that will lower populations of fish, or they'll just find a different spot to do it. It does lower the potential spots for them to do it if you block a stream, though. Other than that, it's difficult to catch a northern hog sucker. I have experience with that. The world record northern hog sucker caught is one pound, 12 ounces. I shouldn't say I have experience. I've just used corn 
and I went out on a long fishing trip trying to catch one, dropping it right in front of their face. They have, they wanted nothing to do with it. It was frustrating. Yeah, the IGFA world record for Northern Hogsucker is tied by two people at one pound, 12 ounces. Pennsylvania, apparently they got the big hogs in Pennsylvania. Let's end fun facts there. Fun facts are over. This dude's pretty chill. I figured those side fin slots would blow through that lead hole right there, and they did. How bad? What's the damage? All right, they stick in just a sliver. Manageable, no problem. I'll just slice off that sliver. Probably have those in when we pour the lead. One more hole. Any and all sharp corners get taken down just a bit with some 150. Lead's hot. Yeah, let's put this thing together a bit. And we're gonna give that a test. And there's a big reveal. We're doing hook hangers on the top. I've not done this before, but I think since it's a bottom feeder bait, that's appropriate. And really all I'm interested in seeing is this thing sink. I just hope it sinks. Watch it not sink. Yeah, it doesn't sink. Great. <laughs> Needs more weight. It sinks, but I'm gonna put a little bit more up in the head because it, it sinks tail first. I do want it to sink evenly, not even head first, just even. Yeah, that's perfect. It sinks flat. And I won't be so afraid for it to actually reach the bottom because the hooks are on top. I feel good about that. Light olive gold. That was raw sienna, and this is old bone white, a little bit. Gotta make sure they're even.
that's even. Decay, I think of it like brown with a little bit of gray in it. That was a little bit of bone white towards the top where I just sprayed that decay brown. This stuff got too dark, but now I think it's spot on. I need a lighter base and then that dark stuff's gonna go over. It's like an orangey rose gold powder, a larger gold flake and a tiny bit smaller gold flake. And that's going in the clear coat. This stuff, lightweight mesh fabric, is what we'll be using on the northern hog sucker scales. When you look at a real one, those scales are pretty dirty. That's the word. They're dirty. Iridescence to them occasionally. So inconsistent. So. I'm going to try to be inconsistent. I'm going to start with a thin layer of pearl white. Just going to make sure I can still see all the color underneath. Alright, detail smoke black in the brush. We're going to angle it and try to shoot it into the front tips of all the scales towards the top flank. Same thing, opposite direction, gold. You can see the darkness towards the front of the scales. It fades all the way to gold and a lot of them up there. Nice. They just disappear so nicely. Like there's so much texture and detail at that angle, but you know, as the lure swims through the water, they just shine. It's good stuff. That is very good.
That was some aluminum foil that I stamped out with some hole punches. That was just a bit of gold. The eye on a lure is really important. It is a very noticed thing. That looks like a northern hog sucker, man. Clear coat. Okay, I just drove a really long ways, super far away from my house. It's where we caught that brown trout in a couple videos ago. It's a fantastic spot. It's the new pike spot. I just wish it was closer to my house. Let's get in there. It seems to happen about twice a year, but I'll lose audio just randomly. As you can hear, it's, that's like one of the most annoying sounds in the world in the background there. Not only is that sound annoying, but the fact that I lost this audio is extremely annoying because a fish bit right here, right there. See me move a little bit. Ooh, what was that? And I saw it, it was in the water down there. Big old large marge took interest. All right. We might have to go back into the creek. We got that one bite from the bass, but it missed. I really hope that was on camera. It probably wasn't. The water did go up, so maybe the fish are in the new spots. That's Nate Marley. Hey. <laughs> we literally came up here because she has never caught a bike and we saw your video. <laughs> That's too bad because I haven't seen one. No, I had a bass hit this ridiculous thing at the mouth. Good to meet We've you. We've been watching your video. She gets mad at me if I watch one without her. And wow, <laughs> see that? It's a northern hog sucker. That is awesome. Yeah, I had a bass like it had its this the tail in its mouth. Really? It was just sitting there. It didn't get to the hook. I got the hooks on top with no this kidding. one. We were up here. Was that in July? Drove three and a half hours, and all I caught was a large one. Here? So, yeah. Man. Yeah, I know. I call it the pike spot, but it was just one time they were we here. that last year. That's a nice one. Could we get a picture with you? Sorry, that's probably really weird to no, hear. No, no problem. Yeah. I don't know where to stand. It's kind of precarious right here. Yeah. Picture by the drainage pipe. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. I'm going to be fishing here for a bit, so I'll be around. Like I said, I didn't mean to steal your spot, so. No, no. Maybe it'll help if you guys catch something, get it on video. <laughs> so sad to lose that bass. And I got a net in case you guys get something on. Awesome, thank you. There are a couple of old beat up ones, but you guys can have these. Seriously? Yeah, that's what I caught the round shot with, <laughs> that one. I've gotten my use out of them, look at them. Oh man. They work good. Thank you so much. You bet. It just swims so natural. I don't know why it's not getting bit. Lost a bit of clear coat under a fin. Other than that, it's like new. I'm quite a few casts in. Oh my goodness. What a cast. Yeah. 
It'll come. Woo. I wasn't worried in the slightest. This bait's like a four and a half ounces of momentum. We're good. <laughs> so I'll just follow you. Sounds good. Cool. One of them fishermen's that brings a lot of rods. Yeah, I gotta have one of each. You want to cast across that? Oh my, that's not a, that's not small. That looked like a trout. It was very yellow. Of course. Is that it? Woo! Look at that beast! Oh my goodness! Woo! That's a Mississippi River brown oh trout. Lord. Look at that! What that a monster! <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. Let me pop that out real quick. Yeah. This is precarious. I'll get you a picture. That's a, an amazing brown trout. Holy that is God. ridiculous. Woo! <laughs> nice. Well, that bent the treble hooks out and everything. Did it really? Yeah. Of course she had to walk away. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Look at that hook jaw. <laughs> oh my God. Well, I guess she sees them. <laughs> Yeah. You might have just made my video. I don't need to catch anything now. Whew. There he goes. Good work. <laughs> You know what, I can already tell because it's getting so bendy. If I keep fishing with this, that fin is going to break off. I'm definitely over like 200 casts by now. I've been here a long time. I don't want it to break. Man, I don't want it to break. I'm gonna put it down. You guys see what I mean though? You can see the clear coat's chipped. I'll give you a better shot of it in the shop. Let's not get crazy, let's put it away. I have my spinning set up in the truck. I don't need to be improvising. I'm just grabbing a rod. Fish on. This is on a 1.7 inch prey bait. What could it be? It's another monster brown trout. What do you know? Dude. <laughs> How? <laughs> Tis the season to catch these right what here. The heck? Look at that red spot on it. Yeah, that's pretty. Man. You get to take a picture of me this time. Heck yeah. I'm supposed to wet my hands. It's a trout. I did it, everybody. Is this the same trout? Almost looks like it. Thank you. It's official. Monster brown trout. Is it? It looks like it. It's we got the picture. Bad. Yeah. We'll, we'll see if it is the same trout, but it's official. He couldn't resist the 1.7 after being caught already. That's pretty official. No, yours has more spot. I, it, it is a different mm -hmm. side, but... This is a stupid day of fishing. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't think that a trout would be, eat like that, though. They're so finicky, usually. Oh, he got one. Woo! It's not the same trout. <laughs> he netted my PB. I netted his. We're basically family. So. I need your number. <laughs> <laughs> That's pulling. Smally. Looks like. It's staying down. Oh, that's a tank. Oh, I should get the net. 
Whoop. Nice. Beefy. Not the state record, but that's still a good one. Oh yeah, that's gorgeous. Hey buddy! Before I started fishing with this, those fins were perfectly symmetrical and aligned. Like this one was coming off the body the same way that one is. Now it's all crooked. This one bent down and it's causing it to swim crooked too and come in at an angle. A little imperfection in how those fins are aligned and this thing swims super crooked. Same with like ice fishing, spearing decoys and whatnot. You don't want crooked fins and that is just so, like I feel like it's work hardening like metal and if I do this more and more and more it's just gonna snap. No bueno. We're gonna put it up and keep it as a nice display piece because that's a paint scheme to remember. Just the whole look of this thing is gorgeous with all those details and marks on the fins. It's even like a little red bloody spot on the bottom of the tail fin and the anal fin there. Good stuff. We were starting to get quite a bit of hook rash too. If you didn't look so good, I would just fish until you're destroyed, northern hog sucker, but I just can't bring myself to do that with this bait. Usually I do, but I don't want to do that with this bait. Thank you, Addison and Michaela, for taking me to those good spots. That was definitely the biggest brown trout I've had out of the water in my hands. I don't know if the one I caught before that this year was bigger or not, but I'd say that one was certainly more official. I had a good look at it. Still don't know if it was the same fish that Addison caught right before that. That'd be pretty insane if that brown trout bit twice within a half hour. It's not typical trout behavior. I think it was a different fish, I don't know. It's gotta be a different fish. Regardless, super official. Up, up. Can you go up, up anymore? He's getting pretty old. Old Chippy's not as agile as he used to be. He just wants outside. It's got a few butt tuffles too. I need to brush them. Got a bunch of other stuffle, stuffle. I got a bunch of other stuff planned for really soon this fall. Hopefully more miraculous catches are to come. Thanks for watching. On to the next bait.